everyone. Welcome to another episode with Montana Outdoor Science School. My name is Melanie. I'm one of the instructors with Moss. Today I thought we could talk about some activities you might be able to do while you are at home. Some things that you can take out into your backyard. Uh, something that you can do anytime you're outdoors in nature. Uh, something that scientists do is they always want to record any results or observations they may have. We can practice using our observation skills with something called journaling. I have made a little journal for myself in the things that I am going to record in it. I gave it a title. I've got lots and lots of pages. You can make your own at home by just stapling a few uh, pages together, fold them in half like so, or you could punch some holes in them, tie it with string, do something similar to make yourself a little booklet just like so. Or if you want, you can also buy something a little bit more hard covered, a little bit more uh, with a little bit more capacity with pages and whatnot. But I wanna show you guys what I put together here. Something that scientists need to use is not just their uh, skills of observation with their sight, but also with their ability to hear things. So sitting out here, I realized in my neighborhood, I have a ton of sounds around me. And something that you can do as an activity in your journal is called a sound map. Let me show you what I've done with mine. I've made a little map uh, that depicts myself in the very, very center right here. And I've drawn all the little things that I heard as I was sitting here for probably a period of 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, you can see I put little, uh, little words with them too. I didn't necessarily label what things were. For example, I didn't say the helicopter was a hel helicopter. I didn't say that these were uh, drips of snow back here, but I did give them a sort of a, a word that's called onomatopoeia, which is the wor the sound that something might make. So you can see I have all kinds of creatures, all kinds of things going on here. I am next to a road. And even though the road isn't necessarily part of nature, it is something I still heard. So I included it in my sound map here. I also have all kinds of birds. And to help me distinguish between these birds, I furthermore wrote all these little onomatopoeia words in here. So we had lots of little robins and chickadees doing little tiny tweets. I had a starling making big scree noises over here. I heard some kind of bird go over me and I wasn't really sure what it was, so I just drew the bird but then over here we all know what that what makes that sound uh something you can do with a sound map is kind of distinguish how far something went so i heard things in the distance i put them over towards the edges of my uh map here if i heard them closer i of course brought them closer to my little figure you can see next to me is a very very large largely drawn fly and it's not because the fly was that large it's because i heard him really close so i drew him bigger so size is something else that you can work with too when drawing a little sound map furthermore Notice that my drawings aren't perfect. I mean, I drew a helicopter, kind of just mishmashed a few shapes together. Same thing with all my vehicles on my on my uh, picture here. My houses are just a few shapes and things are pretty basic looking. And that's the same thing that you can do. You can make this as detailed or as uh, extravagant as you want. You can color it in. You can use different colored uh, pencils, markers, anything you want to do. But this is something that you can do right at home with your uh, supplies that you have right there. So just take a nice little seat in your backyard. Have a, have a mo few moments to kind of listen to what's going on in your neighborhood, neighborhood, and then you can make your own sound map at home as well. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope to see you next time.